Welcome to our introduction to Computer Uninterruptible Power Supplies, or UPS for short. Now, it's fair to say that although an absolutely essential part of all IT infrastructures, the UPS is almost always hidden away, usually mounted in rack cabinets in the server room or data center, but they are there, protecting every single device directly or indirectly in case of power surges or blackouts. Every desktop PC, workstation, server, switch and storage device in your workplace should be connected to a UPS. For the server room, this is usually done via a power distribution unit or PDU that fits in the rack being connected to each device. The PDU then connects to the UPS. Individual PCs and laptop power supplies should also be connected to UPS units too. Although they don't necessarily need the protection that server infrastructure does, it's still good practice. So although we've said that all infrastructure components should be connected to a UPS, the requirements of each piece of hardware will be different. The most basic function of a UPS is to protect an electrical system against power surges, irregularities such as brownouts and complete failures such as blackouts. If you imagine a PC that suffers a sudden power loss, it may be that you lose the latest version of your documents, assuming that also save and regular backups to a server are in place. Annoying, but mostly an inconvenience. Now imagine how much worse things would be if the server that backs up the documents from your PC goes down due to a power failure. A sudden power loss would be catastrophic. UPS protects against blackouts with an internal battery that provides enough power to the system to allow a graceful shutdown. One where ongoing tasks are completed and all files and data can be saved before powering down. In the case of the PC, this may be 30 seconds runtime, allowing you to save your work. But in the case of the servers, you may need 5 to 10 minutes runtime to shut down all processes cleanly. The longer the runtime required, the larger the batteries needed. As you can see from these images, a floor UPS is designed for PCs and monitors to be plugged into using standard 3-pin plugs, whereas the tower and rack mount models usually use IEC C13 or C14 kettle lead type cables. Aside from the cable connection type, there are three main types of UPS. Offline or standby UPS, online UPS and line interactive UPS. The offline standby UPS is the most basic out of the three. It provides light surge protection and battery backup during normal operations. It gets its power from the main power source, generally an AC outlet. Once it senses that the main power source goes beyond acceptable limits or fails, it switches to the offline standby battery where it will then go to the DC-AC inverter. As such, there'll be a small transfer time between the main power source and the battery. An online UPS differs from an offline standby UPS as the DC-AC inverter is always connected. This means there'll be no transfer time between the main power source and battery, providing greater protection against spikes, sags, electrical noise and complete power failures. Finally, a line interactive UPS has a similar design to offline standby UPS, but with the properties of an online as well. A line interactive UPS can handle small under voltages and over voltages at about 20% from its standard voltage. Even during these small under over voltages, the battery is still not being used and it's being charged until there's a big under or over voltage. Like an online UPS, there's no delay in switching power sources in the event of failure. There are several factors that influence choosing or sizing a UPS, including the combined load of all the equipment the UPS will protect, scope for further system expansion, battery runtime and redundancy. Correctly sizing a UPS is crucial as it will not power all the connected devices in the event of a failure if the battery capacity is too small. The first step is to calculate the total power range for the combined critical load that needs protecting. The power consumption of electrical equipment is stated in either watts or volt amps, whilst UPS are rated by volt amps or kilovolt amps, so you may find that you need to convert watts to volt amps. To convert watts to volt amps, you simply need to divide the watts by 0.9. Now that everything is in volt amps, you can calculate your total. This figure is the minimum size that your UPS should be. Please note that a UPS should never be sized to run at 100% load capacity as this isn't recommended for safe, stable and reliable performance. Here's an example for a typical office where a server may run at 1400 watts, PCs at 400, 
monitors and printers at 25 and switches and routers at 75 watts each. You'd add all these wattages together and then convert the total figure to VA. The 10,375 watts becomes 11,528 volt amps or 11.5 kVA. Multiplying by 1.25 allows for expansion and growth of the business, giving us a 14.4 kVA figure. Once we have a UPS size figure, the key thing then is providing enough runtime in the event of a power failure for all processes to be safely completed and data saved. This depends on the nature of the equipment, but in a mission critical business, runtime may need to be quite substantial to allow not only shutdown of devices, but perhaps in a specific order to ensure no processes are interrupted unexpectedly. Continuing with the previous example, a 15 kVA UPS would only provide around 8 minutes runtime, whereas scaling this up with additional batteries could extend this to as much as 25 minutes. Smaller UPS will have a single battery install that's replaceable but not expandable or upgradable, whereas larger UPS, usually rack mount ones, will offer extended runtime modules. And these are essentially extra batteries mounted in additional rack mount chassis that sits under the main UPS unit. UPS units that support extended runtime models offer greater flexibility. In contrast, fixed single battery versions will provide a fixed runtime. So the only way to increase this is to go to a higher rated VA UPS. Extra batteries allow you to increase runtime without having to upgrade the VA rating, making it more cost effective overall. All UPS brands will have a calculator that allows you to select a UPS size and a runtime that you require, and it will then recommend options with useful runtime graphs that highlight how runtime will be affected should your load increase. So hopefully this has helped you to understand a little about UPS. However, we do appreciate that it can feel confusing. And if you've got any questions or need a hand with calculations, please do get in touch. We've also added links below to the web version. If you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch and one of our IT infrastructure experts will be happy to help you. And of course, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss any of our Scan IT videos.